We're previewing the state cross country meet. Both the Southwind boys and girls are heading to Fort Dodge this weekend. We're with Kevin Carney and Scott Conway. And Scott, I guess I'll start with you. Uh, first time ever, uh, both the boys and the girls have won the uh, state qualifier in the same year. From what I understand, uh, first time since 2017, uh, both teams are heading to state as a collective unit. How fun is it to uh, have everybody uh, still uh, practicing and uh, getting ready uh, this time of year? Uh, very fun. It's been um, definitely a, a challenging year. I was just talking to Jake Ellsburn in the hall the other day. Uh, it's been one of those years. I mean, with sport, you always know that things aren't going to go your way. Someone could get hurt. Someone could, could get sick. Uh, this particular year, if you happen to sit by the wrong person, go to the wrong event, um, you, you just don't know from day to day uh, who's going to be available. So, um, you know, we've been really talking about that a lot the last couple of weeks, you know, just being able to have everybody there um, is half of the battle. And uh, Kevin, uh, talk about those protocols that have been in place uh, all season long. Uh, is the mere fact that uh, there were these events, uh, there were these uh, things that kids love to do, like uh, compete in cross country, uh, the mere fact that that was available, do you think that was a little bit of motivation uh, for the kids to uh, go out and do the right thing and their families as well? Oh, I think so. I mean, um, you know, as far as, you know, just the general day-to-day -day protocols, um, I, I think, you know, things have worked well for us at our school. Um, parents and kids have kind of had the choice to do whatever they felt was best for their family in terms of either being online every day, being in school every day, being on a hybrid model. Um, so there was a lot of flexibility in regard to school and parent work schedule and things like that. Um, so that worked out well. And yeah, the kids being able to, um, you know, there's a lot of places right now that they don't get to compete. They, you know, they're, they're still kind of dealing with the lockdown of the spring and, and, you know, that's obviously be, you know, a, a contentious idea in general. Um, you know, I, I'm personally, I'm glad that we're kind of trying to, to, meet the the safety precautions as best we're capable of doing and at the same time um you know having having school having kids be involved um because that's important too and you know you know i just i look back on you know i you just think about your own life and the things you did you know i went out for cross country on a whim 35 years ago when i was a sophomore in high school um literally almost on a bet and I mean, what if that was my sophomore year? What if I never went out for cross country my sophomore year? I mean, you know, the, these things are, you know, sports, we always say, oh, it's, you know, it's just sports, but you know, it means a lot to the kids and it can, it can really, um, yeah, it can be a motivational force for them and, and their families. And, and, you know, especially now, I mean, when there's certainly less, <laughs> we have all had less to look forward to over the last, you know, eight months or so. So any kind of normal day-to-day -day stuff really uh, is an incentive. And let's, uh, for Scott, uh, talk about the uh, boys team. Uh, been a successful year, a four-year group. Uh, what's made this uh, boys uh, team a successful and a special group uh, for you guys? Um, I, I think there's a, a number of different factors. You know, like we've talked about in the past, um, you kind of have to have the right mix of, uh, you know, talent and hard work. And, and we, we have definitely that mix. Um, but the other thing too is I think these guys really gel and get along with each other pretty well. Um, they're very supportive of each other. Um, they're very encouraging. And I think one of the things that's really kind of separated us is that we have really, especially from one to five, we've shrunk that time down uh, and it was kind of interesting at, at the district meet um you know our five guys kind of went by and uh i don't even know where this kid was from but he was like man coach that's fun to watch mm -hmm. and it is you know it's it you know a number of people were just commenting how fun it is and how impressive it is to see these five guys move through as a group and, and i think that's really kind of helped us because this one person hasn't maybe felt well or started to drop off, 
you know, someone else has stepped up and pulled them along and, and that's really kind of contributed to our success. And the uh, girls team, uh, Kevin, uh, Billy Wagner has provided that uh, consistent low stick for you. Uh, she was on the uh, deck last year at Fort Dodge, and uh, she's kind of picked up where she left off uh, from uh, last cross-country season. What has made it uh, individually a great year for her? Um, I think uh, a lot of times, you know, um, uh, a kid comes in as a freshman, ha has a, a good deal of success like she did last year. Um, and, you know, sometimes that can be just, frankly, a little overwhelming. You're not quite – you know, don't even maybe know what cross country is all about that much. And, you know, all of a sudden you realize you're pretty good at it. Um, you know, so I think, I think for her, um, you know, once, you know, once cross country was over last year and, and, you know, we lost track in the spring. Um, so she did a good job just on her own of continuing to do the work. Um, you know, she, she likes running. She's, um, uh, dedicated to it she you know she doesn't just show up and see how she does um you know she puts in that effort on her own <clears throat> to try and improve and things like that so the fact that here you have a young kid with really only one season of experience under their belt and um they have the you know the discipline and the motivation um in the off season to when we don't even have seasons we should have to and you don't even, we didn't even know about this fall for that matter. Um, you know, to take eight months of your life and keep working. <laughs> I mean, that's, there's a lot of, you know, adults who wouldn't, you know, wouldn't want to do that kind of thing. So to me, I think the, the biggest accomplishment for her individually is just, you know, is more not the places or the times, but the, those habits she's developing as far as a, a work ethic and a competitor and, you know, she gets to run against good competition all the time around here and challenge herself. So um, I think that to me, that's, that'll carry over into future years more so than any one time or place ever really matters. And Scott, you touched on the uh, team aspect of the boys uh, side. Uh, seemingly it's the same way on the uh, girls side of things. Uh, Billy has gotten that low stick uh, for your team a uh, year meet in and meet out this year, but uh, a lot of uh, runners uh, coming along right with her uh, for the most part uh, this year. Is that fair to say? I, I, that's fair to say. And, and to build on what Coach Carney was saying, I think a lot of that is we, you know, just hearing through the grapevine, hey, I see so-and-so running in Spillville. Hey, I've seen so-and-so running on the trail. Uh, we had a, a number of kids who worked hard through the spring in the hopes of having a, a, a track season that didn't transpire. And, you know, rather than get frustrated and, and say, well, why put in the time? Why bother? Because we may not have cross country. Let's just roll the dice and see how things work. We had a number of kids who put in that time. Um, and you can, you can see that in, in both the boys and girls teams, which is why I think our, our girls team um, is competing as well as they have, too, because we, we've had a number of kids that have really stepped up. Um, you know, and then you, you look at someone like an Anna Ditzenbach, who last season struggled a little bit, and we find out it, it was medical related, and, and she stepped up and become a huge part of our team. And as she's improved, she's drug along our six and our seven. Um, so they, they've really developed as a team um, from last season, but even throughout this season. And getting back to uh, Billy, uh, Coach Carney, uh... How cool is it that uh, really the top uh, three runners in Class 1A on the girls' side are Upper Iowa Conference kids uh, with Haley Meyer of uh, Key Hodge, Alyssa Plazic of Turkey Valley, and uh, Billy herself uh, getting to see the best of the best uh, in a quite a few meets that you compete in. Uh, that can't help but make you better, correct? Oh, exactly. And, you know, um, you know, throw in some of the other kids, even in the other classes we've seen around here from Charles City and Decorah. Um, you know, and that, yeah, it really makes a big difference, um, you know, where now, you know, Billy as an individual or, you know, our whole girls team for that matter, I mean, they've already seen, they're not going to see anybody at the state meet that is better than, you know, the, the, the three girls in our conference, as well as, um, you know, Anderson from Decorah and, and Connell from 
Charles City, I mean, they've already seen five girls um, in races that, you know, it, there just isn't anybody, um, you know, throw in two or three more girls in 1A that are around the same as um, Haley and Billy and Jalissa. Um, you know, it does make a big difference because sometimes the state meet can be a little overwhelming. Um, you know, just so to sort of know where you kind of already fit overall in that race, you know, as far as in comparison to the front end. Um, yeah, that's definitely, uh, you know, a motivating factor and, you know, builds a little bit of confidence and, and stuff like that as well. And uh, with the way the world is, uh, Scott, it's definitely going to be a different uh, state cross-country meet experience uh, this year. And the state making the wise decision to spread out the crowd and the, the teams and everything like that, you're pretty much going to be running as one class on Saturday afternoon in Fort Dodge. Does that change the experience at all, or is it uh, just a case of your kids just want to show up and uh, get after it? Uh, it, it definitely is going to change it. Um... You know, it's probably going to – the boys will probably notice it a little bit more than maybe the girls because we've had a couple of guys that have been down there, you know, two, three times now and have competed. And, and so that will be a little bit different experience for them. Um, you know, but then, you know, there's a lot of our kids that this is going to be the first time down there. So, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be what it is. But uh, I, I think – regardless our, our kids are going to go down there and just compete um and so you know i, I don't think they're gonna i guess i don't personally think they're going to be dwelling on oh geez it's it's not quite the same but I, I tell you what i thought you know a couple of meets may not be quite the same experience and i, I think of our meet and and you know they, they were still a good crowd and still moving through and cheering and and so you know i it, it's going to be different but i don't know how much different and Kevin, what's it going to take for uh, your kids to have their best day possible come Saturday? Um, <clears throat> uh, well, number one, like Coach Conway <laughs> reiterated at the beginning, we got to get there first, which in this year is just um, – I, I, I feel really bad for some of the teams that, you know, kind of missed out at the end of the year. Um, I, I, I just – I hate the idea of luck playing basically any role in in this i know it always does a little but i mean to the extent it does this year is just really unfortunate um you know beyond that once you know assuming we're there and ready to roll um hopefully it just it just simply takes our kids understanding they just need to do what they've been doing um you know um we've had years before where you go in to um, whether it's a, a state qualifying meet in particular and think, well, you know, if we do these three things we've never done before and those two teams, you know, fall apart, then maybe we have a chance or something like that. Um, you know, so, I mean, we tend to, you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate this year where, you know, we just want our kids to go in and have a good experience, um, you know, run confident, um, and just compete like they have been run together with the with the kids on our team that they've been running with and honestly i think if they do that you know it does, i guess at that point it doesn't really matter what place you get because that was as good as you could have done and so you know i think just understanding that is usually the biggest hurdle and kevin uh, i know uh, you want the attention on the uh, student athletes and uh, scott i know you're the same way but i'd be remiss if i didn't congratulate you for uh, the golden uh, plaque of distinction award that you will get uh, on a Saturday. It's the second straight year. A Wenishi County uh, cross country coach uh, will get it with Christy Nimrod of Decora getting it last year. And I guess I'll just editorialize that uh, the kids that uh, run cross country in our area are uh, blessed to have some uh, great people uh, like uh, you two leading up uh, programs like that. And I'll uh, congratulate you. Thank you. Well, co coaches, uh, it'll be a fun day uh, Saturday, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys can uh, have as good of a day as possible uh, come Saturday. We wish you best of luck. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Scott Conway and uh, Kevin Carney uh, from the Southwind Cross Country Program, the boys and girls back at state together for the first time since 2017.